we've set up elastic jobs, but how can we tell if they've failed or succeeded without logging to the portal? And what if we run out of capacity? Well, we're going to cover those two topics on today's Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us that subscribe. We here on Tales from the Field drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have this thing we call the Roundtable, where we gather up links, blogs, videos put together by you, the MVPs of the community for the Azure data community. We also do these videos on Mondays and Wednesdays we call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. In a previous video, I set up Elastic Jobs. However, we don't want to log into the portal every day to find out if a job succeeded or failed. So we can configure job agent alerts with Azure Monitor. Also, we may run out of capacity. You can see on the screen that with JA100, we get 100 concurrent connections to our targets of our Elastic Jobs. We're going to cover how we can scale that up today, and we're going to cover how we could do it in the portal as well with PowerShell. So over here in my Elastic Job that we have already deployed, we're going to go down here to Monitoring and select Alerts. Once we select Alerts, we're going to be taken to our Alert screen. Up in the top of the screen, we are going to go up to Create. Once we select Create, we're going to select Alert Rule. We're going to select Alert Rule. We get three signals or a couple signals here, but I'm interested in Elastic Jobs execution successful. You could also do failed or timeout. You're going to fill in the appropriate information here on the screen. I'm going to fill in threshold of zero and we can fill in our loopback period if we want. We could change this. In this case, I'm going to leave it at defaults of one and five minutes. We're going to go ahead and select next. For actions, we're going to create a new action group. We could have already had one, but you can see I filled in some information here. We could select by region. I'm going to leave it global as well as we need to give it our action group name and we need to give it our display name. We're going to go ahead and select next. Once we select next, we need to give a notification type. I want to send by email, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to type in my name for this notification type. I'm going to click on email and I'm going to fill in an appropriate email. Here you would probably want to use a global group. We're going to click OK. We're going to fill in some actions here or we're not going to fill any actions here, but this is where you could put a web hook or some sort of action if it fails. We're going to fill in our tags. We're going to do review and create and then we're going to create our action group. With that action group created, we are now going to go to details. We're going to fill in details. I'm going to do this as informational. Since we're only tracking successful jobs here, you could elevate that to a higher severity, especially for errors. We're going to do review, and then we're going to hit create. This is going to create our alert rule. Back over here, let's look at our alert rules. You can see there that we have our alert rule created. Next thing we need to do is start a job. So let's go ahead and start our index maintenance solution job we created in a previous video. Once that completes, we can go back over here to alerts on the left hand side in our pane. And look at that. We have an alert rule that fired. We could go over here. We could review the alert and we can mark it as closed. We know it's successful. Let's go ahead and mark it as closed. But you can see here that we can get alerts sent to the team also via email. We would get that alert. All right. So what if we need to scale? Well, we have a pricing tier, which meets most folks needs of JA100. But what if we need more connections? Well, what we could do is we could go over here on our left blade and we could say scale up or down. We could choose JA200 in this case and choose update. Once it's complete, we'll see that our pricing tier has changed. But what if we want to scale down? Well, let's scale down using PowerShell. On the screen, I have a parameter, so I'm going to pass in. I'm passing in my server name, my name, my resource group name, and most importantly here, the SKU name, which is J100, and the worker count, which is going to be 100. That's going to scale us down from 200 to 100. So those parameters are really important to get right there 
so that this will scale up or down appropriately. Next thing to do is set run our set AZ SQL Elastic job agent, pass in those parameters, it'll complete successfully. We can review that here in our overview screen and look at that pricing tier JA100, we've successfully scaled down. All right, there we have it. We're getting alerts via email. We scaled up through the portal. We scaled down through PowerShell. Let us know what you think in the descriptions down below. Thank you from Tales from the Field. And as always, be good to each other. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.